straight home games. Grayson Atkins will kick it away. Terrius Wheatley is deep for the Hokies, and we're underway in Blacksburg. Wheatley going to let it hit, field it at the one here at the near side. And Furman had it momentarily, and the Paladins finally will wrestle Wheatley to the ground. So right away, we'll get a look at Ryan Willis, this fifth-year senior from Overland Park, Kansas, who is at the controls for Justin Fuentes' club. Wes, this is a guy that started his career at Kansas University, transferred to Virginia Tech, and it's been a mixed bag. Started last year, took over the starting job after Josh Jackson went down and got hurt. Justin Fuente opened up a quarterback competition that Ryan Willis eventually won. The freshman Keyshawn King is the running back, and we get a flag on the first snap. Ball start. Number 60. Offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Well, that's Silas Janzi, the right tackle, accused of the false start. Now, Janzi today makes his seventh start in his 14th career game for Justin Fuente. You've already heard from Eric about Doug Nestor and Brian Hudson. Two young guys, I mean like pups, getting to go today. And this is Keyshawn King, the young freshman who they're very excited about. And Roddy, he gets five on the first carry before Gilby. Brian Gilby, the redshirt freshman, makes the stop for the Paladins. We asked Justin Fuente about this running back room yesterday. He lit up when talking about Keyshawn King, saying that this guy is a guy we've got to get going. Dwayne Vaughn, the defensive coordinator, Furman, already showing some pressure. Here's Willis to King out of the backfield. And Keyshawn King to the 14-yard line ahead of the tackle from Donovan Perryman. So the young freshman already involved in the first two snaps. Two plays and two touches. It's man-to-man. -man and Just throw it to Keyshawn King in the flat. Let him make a man miss. Sets up a third and third, about seven. Yep. Have to be. This is a situation where Ryan Willis, he likes to go to the boundary to the bottom of your screen. If he gets one-on-one -on -one coverage, looks like he's got safety help over the top. Though. That's Caleb Smith there at the bottom. Three receivers to the top, including the tight end Mitchell and Willis to throw. Crossing route, and this is Caleb Smith. First down, 25, breaks a tackle. Out to the 36 goes Smith. And that was played with a lot of confidence, Roddy. Certainly was. This is essentially a screen pass. It's a shallow drag by Caleb Smith. Everybody on the right side is basically blocking. It's man-to-man -man coverage. Caleb Smith able to beat coverage. Pick up a big first down for the Hokies. Callie Chiswick made the stop for the Paladins, the son of the former Auburn coach Gene Chiswick, and now a false start. And the second penalty. False start. Number 82. Offense. And that's on Mitchell, the tight end. Still first down. So two penalties early here. Both are procedural against Virginia Tech. Get out in front of your home crowd, Russ. Get a little jazzed up. Oh, it's got to calm down. And this is Deshaun McLeese getting a yard. McLeese, 64 yards on 20 carries last week. Under 100 yards in the first couple of ball games for Virginia Tech, who, as Roddy told you, only 114 and a half yards of rushing. That's 14th in the ACC and 107th nationally. The thing that scares me if I'm Virginia Tech is 2.8 yards per carry. That is unacceptable. Second down. Willis to throw. In trouble. And he will be sacked. Adrian Hope, who had 15 of them a year ago, preseason All-America after an incredible freshman year, is right there for his second sack of the year. Coming off the right side, just with Silas Janzi, who oversets on an inside move. Ryan Willis never really had a chance setting up a third and long. You have got to find 81 of Furman. Check out this defense, Wes. You've got three linemen down and nobody else within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. They'll throw it underneath. The catch is made, and this is Tavion Robinson, a young freshman. Back toward the 37. And Virginia Tech will bring on Oscar Bradburn to punt. One of the most unique defenses you'll ever see. Not only do you just bring three and drop eight, you drop all of those eight at about 15 yards from the snap. 
So six plays for the Hokies. Fair catch call for by Amir Trapp at the 10. And we'll get our first look at the youngster from Highway 501 in Conway, South Carolina, the redshirt freshman Darren Granger, who last week was fantastic. Nearly 400 yards of total offense in a tight loss to Georgia State by six points in Atlanta. Well, he did it against FPS competition, and he's got some help around him, Wes. You see the stats from him on the year. SOCOM Player of the Week, but number 22, Devin Wynn, is a really good player, as is 89, Thomas Gordon, and an incredibly experienced offensive line in front of him. That's Wynn in motion, and here's Granger. Straight ahead, Devin Abrams. Maybe a yard to the 12. Dax Hollyfield. We'll call his name a lot today. The sophomore from Shelby, North Carolina. 62 tackles a year ago. Former high school All-America. Stories that the coaches told about him was pretty funny. He's a gym rat. He's a guy that loves being around Coach Bud Foster. He has been great in the middle of this defense. Granger's got a slot left here on second and nine. Cuts it loose and incomplete, trying to go to Thomas Gordon, who had a career night last Saturday in Atlanta for the Paladins. So now all of a sudden, third and nine, and Furman is number one in the Southern Conference in third down conversion at 52% a year ago. Well, they're six and 11 at Georgia State. They're great on third downs because typically they work themselves into third and short, third and manageable. This is a third and nine. And against the Bud Foster defense, I can tell you from experience, this is not the situation you want to be in because you can have guys coming from all over the place. Yep. Granger in the gun will throw. Up in the pocket. Pressure coming. And he'll be sacked. Deshaun Crawford manages to get from his inside tackle technique to get to Granger here. It just took too long for the routes downfield to be established. You see there's pressure up the, on the outside from Emmanuel Belmar. Has to step up in the pocket right into the waiting arms of Deshaun Crawford. It's a good sign for this defensive line against the very experienced Furman offensive line that they're able to get pressure early in the game. Grayson Atkins will punt it and Hezekiah Grimsley stands in plus territory for Virginia Tech. End over end by Atkins, and it takes a firm and bounce toward the Paladin bench. But Virginia Tech is going to start at the 44-yard line of Furman. Underway in Blacksburg, no scores of yet. It's a possession and great starting point for the Hokies at the Furman 44. Willis has got Stewart with him in the backfield. He'll hand it to Caleb Stewart. And the redshirt freshman from Jacksonville hit by Braden Gilbert. So we've seen McLeese and Keyshawn King and now Caleb Stewart. We also saw Terrius Wheely, another yeah. running back, returning the opening kickoff. And they like to do it by committee here at Virginia Tech. As you see Caleb Stewart coming off the field. Jalen Holston, the junior, is actually out this week with an injury. So that's one less running back that we'll see. Keyshawn King. Pounds off one guy, reroutes, and almost gets the first down. In fact, may have the first down cutting to the 34 yard line here. How about this, Roddy? Well, I think you see why they're excited about this kid. A great job stuffing the hole and then just bounces outside, and the acceleration to get through what is a very narrow opening. The acceleration, short area quickness, that burst, that's why they're really excited about number 35, Keyshawn King. This is a true freshman, Oak Leaf High School, Orange Park, Florida, who had 2,000 rush yards and 31 touchdowns a year ago as a senior. And he'll get the call here on third and about a half foot, and he'll have the first down easily. King had a touchdown last week to get the Hokies on the board against Old Dominion, but He's had uh, some freshmen do in this world, Roddy Jones. Ball security issues along the way. He certainly has, and Justin Fuente likes for his guys to secure the ball the entire time they have it. Willis on first down. McLeese has come back in as a running back spot, but here's Willis, and Ryan Willis will pick up a couple. Eric, uh, it was interesting 
as Gilby makes the stop of Willis. Yesterday, Justin Fuente came right in, and you had just said that I've heard Fuente likes for his backs to get up with the ball after they're tackled, and Fuente went right to you and said that's what he wants. Justin Fuente plays no games with ball security. He wants his running backs, receivers, quarterback to get up with the football, not set it on the ground, not lose the ball out of bounds. He wants them getting up with the football each time, and that's how you build trust with Fuente. Here's McLeese for second down. Quick throw. This is Mitchell. First catch for the big tight end. And he'll be a yard shy of the first. A lot to like about 6'3", 252-pound sophomore James Mitchell from Big Stone Gap, Virginia. This guy may be the best-kept secret in the entire conference, Wes. You turn on the film and you see him all over the place. He plays in line as a tight end, is a great blocker. You see him right here on the edge in line as a tight end, but they'll split him out wide, they'll single him up. Incredibly versatile, one of the best tight ends in the conference. Turner to the right, here goes Keyshawn King, and that's the first to the 20. So King has come in twice on third down and banged away for first down yardage for Virginia Tech. By the way, Willis is four for four to start the ball game, guys, at 44 yards. The Hokies are going to continue to test Furman right up the middle. Furman is so much smaller. If you look at number 51 in the game right now at nose guard, he is 5'9", 255. The Hokies are 300 plus across the board up front. Willis, play fake, shoots it inside toward Mitchell, incomplete, and almost picked by Hugh Ryan. Out of the outstanding Dutch Fork High School program in South Carolina, the safety almost had this one, Roddy. Well, it's a really good play. Just reads it all the way. Going to his favorite receiver, James Mitchell. Looks like it's a run-pass option. The linebackers commit. Ryan Willis comes up and throws the slant. He's fortunate that it was a bang-bang play, and that didn't end up in the hands of a Furman defender. Willis moving the pocket. Mitchell trying to find room. Now Willis will just tuck and head across the field. And it will be third and medium. Donovan Perryman angled him out of bounds. They're going to make this Virginia Tech offense earn it today, is this Furman defense against Georgia State last week. It was a lot of drop eight, a lot of playing zone to not get beat over the top. Ryan Willis talked to us about the fact that he's going to have to stay patient and he wants to just dish the ball to his hands of to the, into the hands of his playmakers. So far, not a lot of room in the passing game for Virginia Tech. Hokies have two tights here. Out in the flat, McLeese, and he'll be knocked out of bounds. Janzi was out there, but McLeese made the catch in traffic. And finally, Perryman there, 44, the captain, knocked him out of bounds. By the way, Donovan Perryman, preseason all Southern Conference. And here is Johnson, who is one for two on the year, his longest field goal, 24 yards last week here against Old Dominion. And this will be 35 to try and put Virginia Tech on the board. And the kick is good. Some lane stadium. Virginia Tech 3 nothing, And there'll be no return for the Paladins. Furman will scrimmage from its 25. Another big Saturday on the calendar in ACC ball, including uh, an interesting couple of ball games tonight, fellas. Clemson at Syracuse, Florida State at number 25, Virginia. That Florida State Virginia games and interesting. Both of them are incredibly fascinating. How about Dabo Sweeney opening up this week with his team, showing them video of Clemson losing up at Syracuse last year a couple years ago excuse me Granger under center win is the tailback kind of an option based look and the dive to Devin win will get a four to the 29 and Caleb Farley the tackle and you get a look at the legendary defensive coordinator of the Hokies Bud Foster who announced in early August this is his last ride in Blacksburg and in talking to him yesterday he said that his team expects to see a lot of different looks from this Furman offense who will go spread. They'll show you some of that option stuff that you saw just a second ago. For those of you who have watched Virginia Tech football for years, that's familiar. That's what Georgia Tech used to look like when they came out yeah. on offense. 
down is Jordan Harris, the right guard for the Paladins. They take a look at the redshirt junior. We'll take a timeout. Guard number 71, Jordan Harris, was the one down for Furman. Looked like the lower body, right leg injury. He's a former defensive lineman, converted to O-line. He's got 10 starts in his career, and he's also a PA announcer for other sports for Furman. We may end up seeing him in the booth with us one day, fellas. Offensive lineman. Yeah, I can see that, right? See. He's, coming, he's coming for our jobs. <laughs> it's in our pedigree. <laughs> it's in our pedigree. I was waiting on the tell me about it. And meanwhile, Granger gets blasted by Shamari Connor. Second sack for Virginia Tech. Who continues to add to an FBS category. 864 sacks leads all of FBS since 1996 when Bud Foster took over. This time. Shamari Connor just comes off the edge, gets matched up one on one against the running back. Devin Wynn wins that matchup. And Furman was, was in a good position with a second and reasonable. Now oh, another third and long Look for this that. Paladin offense. How about that? The LPD doing work. Always. Here's Granger going to push the pocket. They hurry the throw, but a nice catch. Wayne Anderson, a true freshman, got blasted on the back end of the play by Connor. And the Hokies have turned up the tempo on Darren Granger here early. There wasn't a ton of pressure on this guy last week against Georgia State, but Shamari Connor doing his part to make life very difficult for the quarterback, Darren Granger, all over the field. That's the versatility of this Virginia Tech secondary, though. Shamari Connor, the nickel, Reggie Floyd, Divine Diablo, the two safeties. We'll see them all over the field. Coming, blitzing, playing in the box. It's going to make it hard for this offense. Wobbly punt from Atkins. Grimsley will have no chance. It takes a firm and bounce. And boy, they got a nice roll right to the 20 yard line. So, Bud Foster, as the defensive coordinator here at Virginia Tech, 33rd in the final years, 24 season as the defensive coordinator. So, let's take the time machine back to, oh, let's say 19, what, 87? The Giants won the Super Bowl. George Michael had the number one hit. The Simpsons made their debut appearance on the Tracy Ullman show on the on Sunday night television. Platoon won Best Picture. And gas was well under a dollar. Keyshawn King has got 10, 15 yards on first down. Willis shoved him out of bounds. They've shown a dedication to the run. This is the Virginia Tech team that coming into this game had only 10 runs of only of over 10 yards on the season. They get one right here. Keyshawn King in this offense got a little momentum now. King's averaging a good number here early. A little bubble screen, a fumble, and Furman trying to get on top of it. It looks like Brian O'K may have recovered the loose change after Trey Turner coughed up what will be the Fifth fumble of the year by the Hokies. And eight turnover, Roddy. It has been a brutal start to the season in terms of turnovers for the Hokies. No doubt that Trey Turner has it with enough time to make a move common to the game. Ball comes out. It's a good job by Furman putting an arm on the ball. I think that was Braden Gilby, the middle linebacker, number 43. Good job by him of closing down Trey Turner, not securing the football, and the Paladins have their first break of the game. Take a shot here, Roddy. I, I don't think so, Wes. I think you got to get your offense going. Devin Wynn slips outside. Wynn's got 10, 15, nearly 20 yards on the first play down to the 21. We have not had an opportunity to talk about these firm and backs much, but check out this cut, little jump cut to the back door, and it's 88 and out the gate for Devin Wynn. This is a guy, we talked about Darren Granger being able to play for FBS programs. This is a guy, Devin Wynn, that they are very excited about out of Greene County, Georgia. He can play for a lot of FBS teams as well. Devin that, Abrams spells win here. That jump cut looked like a young Roddy Jones out there, guys. <laughs> Here's Granger, and he'll just run the straight keep. He would. I appreciate you saying a young Roddy Jones. If I tried to do that now, it'd be two hamstrings and maybe an Achilles, too. 
Ronnie, I'm, I'm curious as to why we're seeing a lot of the base option set of all the things Furman throws at you. They run a lot of stuff from the same sets, but we're seeing a lot of the base option look here today out of uh, Clay Hendricks' squad early. Well, it keeps you really simple. You have to be option sound. The defense has to be option sound on both sides, so it makes it really vanilla. Now we've got an unbalanced look with a little bit of an option player to it. Granger cannot get rid of it. The Hokies cash in. Rip Ashby is there. Along with Belmar. Third sack already for Virginia Tech. They came out of this set and hit a touchdown last week against Georgia State. Granger steps up in the pocket and avoids the first. But Rashard Ashby, the guy they call Rook in the middle of that defense, the leader, he's the guy that ends up bringing them down. And this is Virginia Tech's lunch pill, lunch pill guy on the defensive side of that football is voted by his teammates. Bump Foster absolutely loves this kid. Third and about a dozen. Granger puts it in the middle of the field and near the first down stick. The catch is made by Thomas Gordon. It sets up an interesting decision whether you kick the field goal or go for two or go for it on fourth down. I think you go for it here. I mean, you're playing on the road in the ACC. Put the pressure on this defense. Abrams has come in as the dive back. Wynn and Gordon are the wings, and that's Wynn, and Virginia Tech jumped early. And it looked like Hewitt. Great use of the hard count by Granger there to get Hewitt, the hard hat winner for Virginia Outside. Tech. Defense, number five, five yard penalty, results in the first down. The hard hat winner for Virginia Tech, given to their guy who wins the strength and conditioning award in the offseason. He's also a captain. You do not expect that out of your redshirt junior defensive tackle. Three penalties, 15 yards already on Coach Fuente's team. And a fumble, too. Yeah, and a turnover. That led to this drive. Granger, boundary side with the option. We'll turn it inside, and it'll be second and goal. Farley there, first guy in the orange hat. Excellent pursuit by this Virginia Tech defense. You see coming inside out. Farley does a good job of leveraging the ball, making Granger turn back in, and the defense swallows him up. And that'll be the quarter. First 15 minutes in the books here at Lane Stadium. We go to quarter two with the Paladins threatening, but Virginia Tech, a three-nothing lead. Well, we go to quarter number two here in Blacksburg, and Furman, is, after the Virginia Tech turnover, has the big three cranked up here, Roddy. Well, all three of these guys have contributed on this drive, and all three of them could play for FBS programs. Justin Fuente told us that this is not a Furman team that lacks talent. Number 13 in FCS this week are the Paladins. Abrams straight ahead. Tries to keep his feet, and he's in for the touchdown. Devin Abrams. It's his second rushing score of the year, and Furman in front. Well, we've talked a number of times about this flex bone formation. This time, that offensive line that we talked about that's so experienced gets enough push for Devin Abrams to be able to sneak into the end zone and get the Furman Paladins ahead by three. Opportunity to go up by four with the extra point pending. Six plays, 41 yards, three minutes, 13 seconds. And we're going to check it out here on review. But Devin Abrams... Redshirt freshman, 220 pounds. All it's got to do is hit the white. There's certainly nothing there that's going to allow you to overturn the call on the field of touchdown. So we'll see. But with so many bodies around, it's always tough. You got all those offensive linemen in there. You, you, you got to pinpoint exactly where the ball is, where his knee is. Gary see if Patterson. A shot. Roddy, Gary Patterson's the referee. The replay official Larry Mallon and the communicator Jack McElwee here today in Blacksburg. It is an ACC crew. And 
Devin Abrams waiting to see if his second touchdown of the year is confirmed. He had a 30 yard touchdown last week in Atlanta against Georgia State. And it is interesting here. We talk about the turnover, the eighth one of the year by Virginia Tech. They're now, by the way, minus or plus minus seven takeaway giveaway on this young season. And seemingly, Roddy, the turnovers have either. After further review, rolling on the field stands. Touchdown. So there you have it. These turnovers have come at a time where last week they were going to beat Old Dominion comfortably in a couple of turnovers. Kind of got the Monarchs back to within reach. You go back to that Boston College game week one. They lose the turnover battle. Five turnovers for Virginia Tech. Only one for Boston College. Yep. And they lose by seven points. So you look back at that game. These turnovers have been a big part of the early part of the season for Virginia Tech. Grayson Atkins to try and make it a four-point lead for the Paladins. And Clay Hendricks' team has a 7-3 advantage early here in quarter number two. Don't forget our triple header of ACC football continues. We'll send you to Miami Gardens where Manny Diaz and the Canes look for their first win of the year against Bethune-Cookman. Bill Roth, John Jimmy, Dr. Jerry Punch will be there. And then ACC Network Primetime Football presented by Geico tonight. The Knowles and the Wahoos from Scott Stadium in Charlottesville at 7.30. Dave O'Brien, Tim Hasselbeck, Katie George will be there for our ACC Network coverage presented by Geico. How about the opportunity Virginia has tonight? If they're able to win against Florida State, that's two conference wins. They're setting the pace in the Coastal Division. This Florida State team is going to face the strongest front that they have faced this season with Virginia going up there to Charlottesville. By the way, the uh, early indicator is Wayne Talapapa back in the lineup tonight, along with Joe Reed and Mike Collins in that power running game that Bryce Perkins helps engineer. Atkins will kick it away. Terry Sweetley, who had a huge kick return last week, 71 yards against Old Dominion Waits. And he will let it hit, and the Hokies We'll start from there, 25. Well, when you come here to Blacksburg, they got several players they honor. But one of the best, old number 78. I mean, come on. Who was stopping that? Who was stopping that when he played in the league? Who was, much, that, much less when he played for the Hokies. I tell you what, I don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to check with Eric Wood because he is with the great Bruce Smith. Yeah, fellow Buffalo Bill alumni here. I'm with Bruce Smith. Bruce, how does it feel to be back in Blacksburg? Man, it, it's always great to be back in Blacksburg. This is this is like home for me. You didn't get a chance to play for Bud Foster, but being around the program, what has he meant to this place, and how special is it that this is his final year and they get to give him a proper send-off? Well, Bud has been a staple in this organization and on this football team. The remarkable run that he's had for this defense over the last three decades. It's, I hope you heard what I said. Three decades uh, has been unprecedented. So uh, my hat goes off to Bud Foster and everything he's done for this university and Blacksburg. Absolutely. Thank you for time, Bruce. Yeah, thank you. All right, Eric, thanks. I appreciate Bruce Smith spending a minute or two with us. That's a, that's a GOAT offensive lineman talking to a GOAT defensive lineman right there. I'll tell you what, bowlers. I mean, that's, that's some good Buffalo Bills representation. And I tell you, Bruce is, when his post football career has become a very, very successful developer in the state of, in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Very quickly, third and four, and now another unforced error, I believe. All star number six offense. A tough day for Silas Jansen. His second penalty and gave up the sack as well to Adrian Hope. Fourth penalty on the Hokies. Second penalty and lined up across from again was Adrian Hope. We mentioned it earlier. Led FCS last year with 15 sacks last year. He is undersized at 218 pounds, but that can be a very tough matchup for a big offensive tackle. So now third and almost the full 10. That's McLeese out of the backfield. Empty set. Willis in trouble. The side. Callie Chiswick came firing through on a corner blitz. Somebody get to coach on the phone, tell him his son registered a sack. 
Well, Dwayne Vaughn, the defensive coordinator for Furman, told us last week they weren't aggressive enough. And if they sat back and let Ryan Willis just pick them apart, there was no pressure. He was going to have a great day. So he talked to us about bringing more exotic blitzes. You saw one there with the corner fire, and they get home. Flag down on the play. And Gary Patterson to sort it out after Virginia Tech went three and out, Roddy, in their possession. Legal formation. Kicking team. More than four players in the back now. That five yard penalty will be enforced at the end of the kick. First down. That will get us to a break. Two minutes in, second quarter. Callie Chiswick snap a sack of Ryan Willis. Sets well, 7-3, and after the penalty, we went to break telling you that Furman was going to add to the return. Instead, they've elected to made Os Oscar Bradford from Sydney, Australia, punt it again. His first punt was 49 yards, and Amir Trapp, who transferred into the Furman program from Clemson, the son of the former Super Bowl champion James Trapp. Replay fourth down. He is deep to receive for the Paladins, but standing at Furman's 40. Trap will signal for and make the fair catch at the 49-yard line. So it kind of works out for Furman there. Near midfield is where the Paladin possession starts. And time for today's Aflac trivia question. In the last 35 years, Virginia Tech has had two number one overall NFL draft picks, which is second most. Which two schools have had more number one overall draft picks? Our answer coming up. And guess, guesses from our esteemed crew. I've got one of them. I don't know about the other one. Devin Wynn has six, almost seven on first down. Dax Hollifield, the tackle for the Hokies. During that last series, when Virginia Tech offense was on the sideline, Fuente went up to Trey Turner and had an exchange with him. It wasn't the heated exchange I expected as much as we talked about Fuente and his ball security. They both left smiling. I think he was trying to speak some confidence into number 11, his great receiver. Yeah. Three carries, 31 yards so far for Devin Wynn. Nice start for the Paladin back. Now Corey Watkins on the carry. On second down, he got a yard. Furman started to get something going in the run game, both from that under center position as well as from the shotgun now. And we talk about the two guys in the backfield, Devin Wynn and Devin Abrams. They got a pretty solid group back there and setting up a third and short. This is where Furman wants to be. This is when they're at their best. 0 for 3 on third down, though, are the Paladins who came in off a 6 of 11 last Saturday night against Georgia State. Virginia Tech held Old Dominion to 4 of 15, and now timeout taken by Clay Hendricks. Now in his third season as alma mater, his team leads by four. South, third and short coming up for the Paladins. When we continue, time to get our Aflac trivia answer. Okay, now the question, last 35 years, Virginia Tech's had two number one overall draft picks, Michael Vick and Bruce Smith, which is second most. Which two schools have more? I went, I went Oklahoma, and I'm going to go Texas A&M because I don't know the other one, but Oklahoma's definitely one. Auburn, there you go. There you go. Auburn and Oklahoma. Third and short. Granger on a dive to Abrams, and he got turned back. And Right away, Deshaun Crawford's had two big plays behind the line, and Furman is hitless on four third down tries. Well, this Virginia Tech defensive line just stuffs the offensive line right at the line of scrimmage. Furman's going to have to punt. He's going to put Virginia Tech back deep in their own territory. I thought this might have been four down territory for the Paladins. Cautious play by Clay Hendricks here, trying to pin them back on their side of the field. Yeah, we've seen them go for it on fourth down once. I think this one's probably a little too long for them to feel comfortable, but I'm with you, Eric. As a Kai Grimsley will get no shot here as the Paladins try and trap 
the Hokies in the corner, but Atkins punt will be up the line here. The question is how far up the line? 15 yard line. So, still a four point lead for Furman. Well, here in Southwest Virginia, we welcome you back to Lane Stadium. Virginia Tech and Furman. Game one of our ACC Network triple header and the youth of the Hokies being displayed here today. In fact, they lead all of FBS and fewest seniors. Only five on this roster for Justin Puente in his fourth year. The offensive line has been hit by that youth movement as much as anybody. Play fake on first down. Willis wants to throw. And overshoots Grimsley and intercepted on the backside by Travis Blackshear. Second turnover in the first half for Virginia Tech and for Ryan Willis. His seventh or his fourth interception of the year. Wes, Hezekiah Grimsley is wide open to running a corner route. And Ryan Willis just overthrows him. Unfortunately for Willis, Grimsley goes up there and is able to actually tip the ball and helps him out. Travis Blackshear has the waiting arms as a interception served up on a platter. Last time the Hokies turned it over, Furman cashed in for a touchdown. Paladins play from the Virginia Tech 42, and this is win. And he got turned around pretty quick. On that interception, we mentioned Brian Hudson, the freshman center in the intro. He got beat there by Taylor Hodge, number 51, the guy who I mentioned earlier, 5'9", 255, lined up at nose guard. He beats him and causes the pressure that made Ryan Willis miss the open Hezekiah Grimsley. Eric, how hard is it as a center to block those guys that are the size of a running back? It can be hard. It's a difficult matchup, and it's not something you're used to facing in practice each day. Look at these Virginia Tech defensive linemen on the field right now. These are the guys that they're used to blocking. When you get a guy that small, sometimes he can slip through the space. Ranger on a slant. That's Gordon the catch. Just in front of the first down stick at the 32. So third and short coming up. And the story for Virginia Tech that has dominated the first, what, two and a quarter games, Roddy? Almost two and a half is turnovers. Yeah, and that, that interception is on Ryan Willis because Hezekiah Grimley's wide open. You just got to give him the football. If you're going to miss, you miss wide, if nothing else. But here Furman is with an opportunity to cash in. 0 for 4 on third down, and Abrams will have it. Got to the 31, I believe. Yep. Spotted to the 31, Devin Abrams. He and Wynn. You got Devin Wynn and Devin Abrams. <laughs> it's the Devons in the backfield. Yeah. Well, two Devons are doing a pretty good job. Yeah, they are. And they do it in different ways. Devin Abrams, who we just saw, is one of those guys that going to give you a little more the, the tough yardage he's listed as the running back whereas Devin Wynn listed as the tailback there's Wynn in the backfield now in a two-point stance Granger play fake on the boot fires it in and the tight end Ryan Miller makes the catch Rangers going out of bounds that'll be a gain of almost eight on first down Reggie Floyd was trailing it there. Good to see him back on the field after being shaken up earlier. Yeah, right. The other thing statistically is we're getting a little bit of a balance now. Uh, 60 yards so far in the ball game. 61 yards in the ball game. 33 passing. 28 rushing here for Furman in this first half. And that's who they want to be. They don't want to put it all on Devin Granger. But this is a guy who has been under duress for most of this ball game. Able to roll out, keep his composure, and deliver a strike to set up a second short. Corey Watkins has come in with Granger. Snap low. Watkins gets the carry. And he got turned back pretty quick. Hokies crashed in. Rayshard Ashby. Dax Hollyfield for Virginia Tech. So back to a third down now for Furman. Fascinating. To watch Clay Hendricks' team because they beat Charleston Southern easily in their first game and then led Georgia State 20 to 3 last Saturday night in Atlanta against the Sun Belt team, only to lose by six. And Hendricks was pretty honest that we ran out of gas. They are controlling the clock by running the football early in this game. Here they are on the third and short. Sixth play of the drive. Out in the flat to the right side, Gordon the catch and a first down. 
Wes, I absolutely love that play call. They get in the same formation they've been in, but instead of trying to run it up the middle again, you get a little natural rub. You go to your big receiver, Thomas Gordon. I say big in terms of importance, not necessarily stature at six foot 180, 178, but it's a great play call when, when Virginia Tech is expecting something up the middle. You go out wide to your go-to player right there. Oh, we haven't seen out of the Paladins, Roddy? Option. Yeah. Maybe one or two plays, but not much. And here is Wynn. And he will pick up about four on first down. Well, the Paladins, as Devin Wynn goes for his 36th yard on five carries. Furman already has added another touchdown to the red zone total this year. Nine trips, nine touchdowns for Commerce Georgia native Clay Hendricks. We haven't talked much about Clay Hendricks' path, but this is a guy who was at Furman for a long time before spending 10 years at Air Force. So that option run the football mentality is in his blood. Well, so. Granger slipped down there right ahead of the pursuit of Hollyfield. Yeah, it was a, that was a good job by the Virginia Tech defense, but that was a speed option right there. Yep. Trying to get out on the edge. But when you're when you're a, a team with some of the option baked in, you're going to get into a lot of third and shorts and red zone opportunities when you get fourth and shorts become four down territory. We'll see how much they're able to pick up here on third down. By the way, they're changing the offensive line here. They bring a redshirt sophomore McKinney in to play at the left guard spot. A right guard spot for Krober. Both their third down conversions have come here. Granger flush from the pocket, has room. First down at the five, touchdown Furman. 15-yard run for Darren Granger. Well, it looked like Virginia Tech decided to bring pressure and play man-to-man -man on the back end. And when Rashard Ashby's not able to get Darren Granger, there's absolutely nobody over there because all of the routes went to the other side of the field. Granger identifies it, takes off, makes a move on Divine Diablo, and gets in the end zone. And Wes, this stadium is shell-shocked yep. being down 10. The opportunity to be down 11 to an FCS opponent in Furman. Grayson Atkins try to add the point and does. And Furman has got a 14-3 lead, thanks in part to the redshirt freshman. Eludes Ashby, shakes Diablo for the score. Up a man pressure, a blitz off the right side of Furman, and it hits home. Ashby comes free, but it appears like number 90, Javon Becton, has got to keep contained, especially against a mobile quarterback in Granger. And Granger escapes the pocket, and against man to man, there's nobody left out there. They're all chasing receivers, and it leads to an easy score for the Paladins. Well, and Eric, here's the thing twice now the Hokies have turned it over, Roddy, and twice Furman has made them pay. Furman hasn't had much off other than what they've gotten off the turnovers. It's kind of the story of the Virginia Tech season. No return for Wheatley. Virginia Tech's sixth possession of this first half will start from its 25. Prior to the original fumble by Trey Turner, the Paladins had negative yards on the day. That turnover gave this FCS team in the Hokie Stadium, it gave them a lot of confidence. So now down 11. Ryan Willis back, and the Hokies are going to empty the set. Two to the boundary, three to the field. Quick throw, Travion Robinson. He's got 11 in the first down. That's where we're going to see the biggest mismatch. When you get these receivers in space, with the ability to make some plays. They're gonna be able to. This is one of the best receiving cores in the entire ACC. So Ryan Willis just has to calm down and dish the ball to these guys. Eight of 10, Willis, 64 yards, does have the interception. Little trap, here's McLeese, and nothing there. Trying to get behind the left guard, Smith. And Furman able to kind of slow things down in the run game there. No gain, second in the full. Under five to go. Now, remember, Virginia Tech does not get the kick to start second half. Furman does. Yeah. 
Here's Willis. Pitches McLeese. Took a big lick after eluding the first man. And took the shot from Elijah McCoy. Another preseason All Southern Conference pick at 91 tackles a year ago. There's the linebacker from Darlington School in Rome, Georgia. Hokies are three of six. They're trying to get the ball snapped. They do. Willis going to cut him loose. First down, and that's Turner into Furman territory to the 44. Willis pass complete. Well, it looked like this Furman team was still trying to shuffle, figure out what the call was, and get guys off the field. Ryan Willis has a ton of time, delivers a strong throw to Trey Turner. Good conversion for the Hokies. Great job also by the fifth-year senior quarterback in Willis, going back to Trey Turner, who had a big fumble earlier, letting him get some confidence to get back into this football game. Two catches for Turner. Here's Keyshawn King. There's your run game, Roddy. That's six on first down. And this youngster right here has got a little pop. Certainly does. Yeah. Got a player down. That's Guy McCoy. Yep. Yeah, just a second ago, Elijah McCoy. We got a quick break in the action as they come out to tend to McCoy. You know, it's interesting, guys. You, we, we talk about this a lot early in college football. I think we have an expectation, media and fans, Roddy and Eric, of of teams being finished products when they start the year. Right. I think what we're seeing in Virginia Tech here today is a is a group that's still growing. One, because they're playing a lot of young people. We've already noted fewest seniors on an FBS roster. Second part is there's still a little bit of transition going on here in four years now with Justin Fuente that maybe the first two years didn't see because you had a lot of older guys. Well, you had a, a top-heavy roster when he first got there. You mentioned the older guys. This was a senior-laden roster. You got a transfer quarterback in and, and Gerard Evans and some great talent and skill, which got you a big 10-win season in Justin Fuente's right. first year. But it takes a couple years for the roster to turn over, and then you get stuck with a very young roster a couple years later because of it. Second down. McLeese back in the ball game. You see Willis with the hand clap trying to see if he can get Furman maybe to jump. That's Turner in motion. He'll get it on the sweep. McLeese tried to help with a block. Turner's got the first down for Virginia Tech. 27 yard line. Inside three and a half to go. Trey Turner had the fumble early in the game. Let's check the ball security here. Gets in traffic, secures it against the body. I like it from the receiver. High tight. Yeah. Points oh. of pressure, right? And he's going to get up with that football, I guarantee you. <laughs> and Wes, you mentioned the youth of Virginia Tech. The only school in college football to have more guys enter the transfer portal last year was University of Louisville. Sack, by the way, came from Seabrook on the defensive end spot. Drew Seabrook, a redshirt junior from Charlotte. It was matched up against the right tackle, Silas Jansey, who's had a rough start to the game. Just a club move getting those hands down, and he's coming off the field after a couple of false starts and a couple of sacks given up. They've got number 69 in the game to replace him. 69 is Luke Tenuta. We saw him earlier in the game, in right. the game, wearing number 95 as a blocking tight end. Here's the toss right side, McLeese. And he'll go out of bounds back at the 32. So Luke Tenuta, six feet seven, 315 pound freshman from Crozet, Virginia. And Tenuta, a familiar name in ACC football circles. His dad, John, the defensive coordinator at Georgia Tech, North Carolina. NC State and also on staff at Virginia and tolerated a red shirt named Roddy Jones in Atlanta. Oh man. Let's just say I was running scout team that year that he was there at Georgia Tech and uh, there was there was no let up for the guys who were red shirted. Now on Luke Fickle's staff at UC is John Tenuta. Willis trying to make the throw, miscommunication on the route with Caleb Smith and he got tagged by Jordan Willis as he cut it loose and Virginia Tech going to try for a field goal. Well, it's interesting. Furman is bringing a ton of pressures that Virginia Tech didn't see a week ago against Georgia State. So it's it's very possible they have not prepared for the different pressures that they've seen. Mix that with a young offensive line. You get some miscommunication on the outside with what Ryan Willis was seeing and with what Caleb Smith was seeing. 
and Virginia Tech is going to try a 50-yard field goal. This would be the longest of Brian Johnson's career. He had a 45-yarder a year ago against William and Mary, and that hit the left upright. So a missed field goal from 50 yards, and Justin Fuente's team is turned away Justin. here with 139 to go. Justin Fuente's got to be thinking on the sideline. It hit the goalpost because of hit the upright because of course it did. That's just kind of how this first half has gone for Virginia Tech. A couple of turnovers that have led to Furman scores. You get a good drive going, give up a sack, have a miscommunication on the outside. And Virginia Tech is struggling on the offensive side of the football. 11 point lead for Furman. Don't forget the Hummel is our signature football show on ACC Network. Jack Collinsworth, Eric McLean, E.J. Manuel, Mark Rick. They'll preview the weekend slate of games, keep you updated on all things football. Friday at 8 Eastern, Saturday at 11 here on ACC Network. Corey Watkins on the first down play. And Virginia Tech will burn the first of their timeouts here. And we'll take it with them at Blacksburg. Tough first half for the home team. Clay Hendricks team trying to get something before the break. Well, 56-year-old Clay Hendricks got to feel pretty good, Roddy, about this opening 30 minutes of football for his team, huh? It's going about as well as you could expect for a Furman team that came in here punching above its weight in an FBS school, one of the perennial powers in the ACC, and capitalized on the mistakes of Virginia Tech. Granger from under center. Here comes the option, and he'll keep first down and four to the 47. 15 yards on second down for Darren Granger. Well, Furman was in a situation where it looked like they were content to run out the clock going to halftime with this lead, but now that you get a first down, looks like they're still in no hurry to run a play. Justin Fuente used that timeout to try and get the ball back for his offense, but you got to get a stop on defense. Just ahead of a minute to go. It's win in motion. Ranger to his right, cuts it loose. Catch is made, banged out of bounds is Avery Armstrong. Originally signed as a quarterback from Columbia, South Carolina. To midfield. Second down coming up with 47 seconds in a moving clock. But knowing he gets the second half kick, Clay Hendricks can kind of afford to go easy here. He is up 11. Well, it's, it's a conservative it's a conservative approach to trying to score to score before halftime. You get a, a rollout pass with your quarterback, a safe pass, see how much yardage you get. You see here, this play right here will kind of tell us whether or not they're content or they're trying for more. Granger throws and through the hands of Armstrong. He actually had two guys there. He had the tight end Miller and also Armstrong. Two levels to this. Man, that's a really good throw by Darren Granger that goes right through the wickets of Miller. You got to come up with that one. Come on, man. You're on the road in Lane Stadium in Blacksburg, Virginia. You snag that, and now you got an opportunity to go put on some more points before halftime. Maybe I have an opportunity to get in the field goal range on that catch. If you make the catch of that and turn it up, you might score. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> sure. I'm, I'm, because the safety undercuts it, tries to make a play. There's nobody left. You're right, Wes. Three for seven on third down is Furman. Win. Trying to bounce one outside. And he'll be short of the first down. And that likely will be the final play of the first half. I don't see either bench looking for a timeout. And that will get the teams to the locker room. The half drive, Furman has not been able to manufacture a first down on a drive that came without a turnover. Look at this. Squaller hit into the end zone. There'll be no return. For the Paladins, Wayne Anderson. Let's go downstairs. Eric Wood, what you got, E. Wood? I talked to Coach Hendricks at halftime, and his adjustments were simple. Just keep playing our game. Do what we do. They were up 20 to 3 ago, a week ago, against Georgia State. So this is not unfamiliar territory for Furman, but they need to finish this one off. And depth could become an issue. They are down 25 scholarships because they are in the FCS level, which can be tough. It was quick to listen this week to Coach Hendricks' comments. The later the game went in Atlanta, the kind of thinner the ranks got for the Paladins. Granger, 
option play. Six yards, Diablo takes him out of bounds. Well, we saw a lot of option action in the backfield for Furman in the first half, but didn't actually see a triple option play. You got it right there. That's in the DNA of Clay Hendricks, having spent time at Furman 10 years at Air Force. This is a guy who said that he's going to incorporate all types of things wow. from different offenses, spread, eye, option. Everybody says he can't do it. They're doing it here. I'll tell you what, he also, remember he played for Dick Sheridan. That was a beer game. Yep. Option base, and here's Wynn. First down and out to the 40, 41-yard line. Farley the tackle for the Hokies. Well, this time they line up in the same formation that they've run that option action out of before, but they back up win. It ends up becoming a single back ace type look. Just run a little inside zone play. Win is, win is able to find a hole, and Furman is out near midfield with a first down. Devin Win, 50 yards on seven carries for the young man from Green County High School in Georgia. Furman came in 292 yards a game on the ground. First in the Southern Conference, second or sixth overall in uh, FCS. Nothing there for Abrams. He got sliced down as it looked like Hollifield was through there, along with Crawford. Or actually, Eli Adams, who drew the start today at one of the defensive end spots. Good, good news for the Hokies. At the end of the half, Jared Hewitt limped off the field with an apparent injury, but he is back on the field. He will be huge this half for trying to stop that interior run as Furman tries to grind this game out. Yeah, he's a guy in the middle that's got great burst. Eric, you mentioned earlier, he's their hard hat winner for exceptional performance in the weight room this summer. Good to see him back out on the field. Well, Virginia Tech always has an ombre like Hewitt, don't they? Oh, yeah. Granger on a boot again. Whips it down the field and off the pads of the intended receiver, DeLuca. Incomplete. A little bit of contact down around the 40, but not enough to merit a marker. I thought this one was borderline. You see Farley get there early. Pretty good call there. Not a lot of contact. Farley gets there early, but swipes and misses. Doesn't pull the receiver at all. Good call by these referees keeping the flags in their pockets. So now third the full 10. Farman hit all three of their third down conversions either all the way to the touchdown drive or in their last possession. Granger up in the pocket. He'll be pulled down and the Hokies get to him there. And that was Belmar. Emmanuel Belmar from outside of Atlanta comes up with a sack. Furman's been really good on the third downs, and they've been manageable, but when they get a little long, this Virginia Tech team has been really good rushing the pass. So that's a really good job by Belmar as well. It's easy for those defensive linemen to continue to climb and try and bend the corner, but when you get even with a mobile quarterback because of his ability to step up and run, you've got to retrace your steps and be able to make the play. Atkins came within a whisker getting the rugby kick blocked. There'll be no return for Hezekiah Grimsley. And Virginia Tech trailing 11. We'll get the football and it's 17 when we come back. They almost got another special teams beamer ball play here in Blacksburg. In the Big East and then the ACC. So we get these new coaches a little patience is always worth it. Keyshawn King breaking tackles out to the 32. Taylor Hodge has to retrace his steps to make a stop. but. Here's some burst in the run game. Let's we'll see, that's one missed tackle, two missed tackle, three. Here, here comes another one. Keyshawn King showing the burst and the explosiveness that a freshman should at this level. And here goes another Keyshawn King run. King to the outside. Can he get it to the house? Inside the 15. Got some help from Caleb Smith and the young rookie doing some work. Justin Puente said it to Eric Wood at halftime. They got to be able to run the ball in the second half. Give Keyshawn King a little bit of space. And he's out in the open field off to the races. How about Caleb Smith getting down there trying to block for the true freshman? Brian O.K. saved the touchdown. 107 on eight carries now for King. Trey Turner on the sweep. Inside the 10. And he got muscled around by O.K. that time. The safety for the Paladins, a senior who played for Kyle Hockman at 
McEachern High School in Atlanta. And an injured player is Taylor Hodge, the nose tackle. Hodges had a great game for Furman so far. We've called his name a number of times and has been disruptive in the backfield. This would be a huge loss for Furman. We mentioned before, depth can become an issue in these games for FCS teams, and this would be a big blow to them. Yep. How about the response, though, by Virginia Tech on this drive? Looked like Furman had a little bit of momentum early on their drive. You end up getting a stop. Virginia Tech comes back. Give the ball to your freshman back. He's Sean King and he's able to get you down inside the 15 inside the 10 excuse me. Yeah. I'm not sure what Fuente said to this group at halftime but the offensive line as King was running down the field was pumping their fists beating their chest. These guys are fired up. It's some life that I hadn't seen in them yet today. Well it's interesting they they still got all those young bucks out there too Eric because Luke Tenuta has started the second half at right tackle. Joining already Brian Hudson and Doug Nestor. Rare that you see in the ACC center, right guard, right, ta right tackle, all freshmen. And banging away McClee, or is that King? That is King, who's come back in to replace Deshaun McLeese. So now it is third down. And now a moment of truth a little bit for this offense, Roddy. Well, I would anticipate no matter what happens, this is going to be four down territory. It looks like they're bringing in Silas Janzi now to get an extra offensive lineman on the field. They're going to go big, try and run the ball right at this Furman team. This is one of those gut check moments, Wes, where, hey, we're going to get big. We're going to run it right at you and establish the dominance. King the carry. Lower the shoulder, drives the stack. He got it. Had to break the plane of the four. And Keyshawn King picked up the yardage. Goes right behind Luke Tenuta and Christian Darisaw on that left side. Able to get enough push for the freshman to be able to get the first down. Looks like King was in a little bit of pain. Well, he got, came off the field after this. I'm not so sure he didn't get twisted around a little bit on that carry on his left leg. It happened right in front of me. The Furman guys were around his legs, and then he eventually got finished up, up top, and he did come off limping. All right, so McLeese is back. First and goal. Look at Mitchell, the tight end. Big fella knows where the pylon is. You can throw me the rock or hand me the rock, Roddy. He's one of the most versatile players in the entire league. We've seen him all over the field. He's caught a pass. We've seen him lined up in line as a blocking tight end. This time, takes a handoff and looks like a running back when he gets the ball. Even at 250 pounds, 6'3", James Mitchell getting into the end zone. Point after is good by Johnson. So James Mitchell, the tight end from Big Stone Gap. You can fit all the Big Stone Gap over there in that corner. 14-10, Furman. They get one of those Friday night specials. David Cutcliffe and Duke, who are in Murfreesboro to meet Middle Tennessee State later tonight to visit Lane Stadium. Then on the road at Miami, who's coming up in game two of our triple header against Bethune-Cookman today at the Hard Rock. John Parker Romo. Drives it over the head of Wayne Anderson, and Furman will start from its 25. New life now after the Mitchell touchdown run here, Roddy. Well, how about the last drive? Six plays, all rushes. Justin Fuente told us yesterday in the meetings they have to run the ball better. Came into this game as the 14th ranked rushing offense in the entire conference, both in yards per game and yards per rush. Justin Fuente was frustrated about that going into halftime, so. Good for Virginia Tech showing the commitment to the run, being able to drop the ball down the field and put it in the end zone. Darren Granger in a two back set. And this is Wynn trying to get to the outside. And real good play in space by Connor. Ball pop loose. Hokies say they have it. Has Furman coughed it up for the first time today? The answer is yes. 
Recovered by Deshaun Crawford. Virginia Tech has coughed it up a couple of times today. Here they get one of their own. Let's see if this is a the ball is out. I don't know about that, Wes. Well, I'm not sure he's on the ground. I'm not sure it is either. Yeah, it looks like he lands on the defender, which wouldn't declare him down. Right, correct. You are absolutely I think the, correct. Yep. The left hip is on Connor, Shamari Connor. You need something to hit other than the foot or hand. You have the hand and foot down, nothing else hits. Ball is out. There is a lot to take in right here, Roddy. Absolutely, and let's remember it was called a fumble on the field, so unless you see something else hit, right there, you see clearance. It looked like... It's called a fumble on the field. I don't think there's going to be enough to overturn it from the views that we've seen. Let's take a look and see if see if he hits right there. No, I don't think it hits. The towel is the only thing that scrapes the grass. I guess it's going to stand. Indisputable video evidence is the trigger here that they're looking for. There's not enough there. What a huge momentum break this would be for Fuente's team. Massive massive and you talked about taking shots Woo. if this Virginia Tech After offense after further review the ruling on the field is confirmed there you go even more emphatic the stance confirmed by the way first fumble of the year for Furman just their second turnover by the way they played a clean game no turnovers up until that point no penalties as well See if Virginia Tech decides to go to the end zone. Ball at the 26 of Furman for Willis, who hands to Turner another sweet play. Trey Turner picks up nine to the 17. Hugh Ryan, whose mom, by the way, Barbara, was a scholarship golfer at Furman. Makes the tackle. Pretty good athletic family. Be hard to beat Ryan Willis. His family, his dad, his mom, and two sisters, all athletic scholars. Unbelievable. Play fake McLeese. Here's Mitchell, the big tight end. Boy, he got wrapped up pretty quick. Throw out in the flat. And Darius Curse made the hit. Trey Turner's out there on the edge. Just gets beat on this block. It's a really good play. Knifing in there by Darius Curse. Bringing down the big guy. Got to go low on those big guys, Wes. You don't go high on those guys. Quick injury update, Taylor Hodge, the nose guard's back in for Furman, number 51, and we have not yet to see Keyshawn King on this series for Virginia Tech. All right. King's got 111 yards on 10 carries, but it's McLeese's game. And this is a keep by Willis. Ryan Willis knocked out of bounds before he could reach the pylon. First and goal for the Hokies at the two. I've not seen this yet here today. Ryan Willis getting involved in the run game. It's a pretty good block out there on the edge by number eight, Bill Patterson. Got to give those receivers a shout out when they're out there doing the dirty work. Not surprising either. James Mitchell, the tight end, out in front of that one too. Seems to be around all scoring plays, all big plays from Virginia Tech. First and goal. Here's Willis, jump ball for Turner. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. And in less than two minutes, Roddy, the Hokies in front. Ryan Willis told us yesterday with one-on-one -on -one coverage and no safety help, his likes his matchup with the receivers against just about any corner at Virginia against Virginia Tech, and that time it's Travis Blackshear, the redshirt freshman from Savannah, Georgia, that gets taken advantage of. And remember what Ryan Willis said? Hey, if I get a matchup with one of my guys against a freshman, I like my guy every time. He likes Trey Turner, touchdown catch, and the lead now for Virginia Tech. 17-14. So in one minute and 48 seconds, the Hokies have gone from down 13 or down 11 to up three.
draws the short straw. The red shirt pressure making his second career start. Goes out and tries to cover Trey Turner. Turner gets the better of that matchup. It looked like Ryan Willis saw that all the way, and that's where he was going, no matter what. First touchdown catch of the year for Turner. Big sophomore from Greensboro, North Carolina. And it'll be the Paladins who will scrimmage from their 25. Don't forget on ACC Network tomorrow, top 20 women's soccer, number seven, South Carolina, at historic Riggs Field to meet number 20, Clemson. 6 p.m. Eastern, right here on ACC Network, and of course the ESPN app. Well, it only took a couple of touchdowns to get this place riled up again. It's as loud as I've heard it all day, fellas. There's no place that gets riled up in the league like this place. Wynn tried to dodge one or two, and man, got seven. When he probably was lucky to get back to the line, Devon Diablo, the tackle of Devin Wynn. Well, the lateral quickness in the vision with Devin Wynn is what shows up. We see that jump cut again. The first hole is stuffed up. He jumps to the next one, is able to explode through. And Eric, earlier we saw Trey Turner fumble. Virginia Tech went right back to him. This time, Devin Wynn fumbles. Furman goes right back to him. Yep. Anderson has come in, or Ronnie, Ro Dominic Roberto. And here's Granger on the boot. He wanted to go low. Now he'll shoot it to Gordon at the 40, and that's a first down. Roddy, you nailed it early in the game. Darren Granger, Thomas Gordon, and Devin Wynn could play for a lot of 85 scholarship programs. Well, how about the awareness by Gordon right here on the sideline? He had a wheel, and if you can't beat the guy, you sit it down and come back to the quarterback. He sits it down, comes back to the sideline, stops, gives his quarterback a target. Hey, and that catch, that's good on Sundays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas Gordon was one of the guys that Bud Foster talked about specifically yesterday as a guy that they have to key on. Four catches, 33 yards for Gordon. Granger is 7 of 10 throwing the ball here today. Will play fake on the dive? Going to tee one up, looking downfield. Wayne Anderson, the freshman, was the intended receiver, but Jermaine Waller trailing it. By the way, of note tonight, primetime on ACC Network presented by Geico, a pair of threes right there that can go get it in Charlottesville. Did you see Cam Akers last week? Blast off. Oh, man. Blast it off. Over 30 carries, 300 yards of offense. I mean, playing grown, they playing grown man football last Saturday. <laughs> he put it on his back, put yep. the team on his back. They may need that again tonight in yeah. Charlottesville. Here's that option look again. Granger will keep it. Boy, got stacked up pretty quick. Just a couple of yards, third and eight coming. I'm not sure he shouldn't have pitched that one, Wes. Looks like the running back had the pitch key le leveraged. What do you see here? Watch Holyfield right here. Yeah, that's the guy that you're reading on the pitch. Watch Granger come out. He pitched the ball right now. He's able to get it out to 22, Devin Wynn. And yeah, you've got Reggie Floyd coming, but that's a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And now Granger is down. He got up from the last play holding his hand. He was pointing to his hand and looking at the sideline. They were trying to signal the play into him and finally had to tell him to go down on the ground. It's his left hand. It's not his throwing hand. But something is severely wrong with his hand where he didn't even feel like he could get a snap on this next play. Eric, you bring up something really good. Sometimes people boo these players that take a knee, but essentially they're being told from the sideline, get on the ground because that'll stop the play. Right, and a lot of times when you see the fan base booing, it's a defender that's uh, maybe or maybe not having a cramp issue and it's trying to kill a drive. This, you're never trying to get your starting quarterback out of the game to buy you some extra time. Right. Well, you need you need that guy to go to the ground there so that you can get reset. And, and let's remember, there was a quarterback competition on this Furman team coming into the year. Hamp Sisson is a guy who's warming up now. Was a, uh, And the coaches thought that Hamp Sisson was actually uh, uh, maybe a little bit ahead of Darren Granger coming into the fall. But come August, Granger just took control of the job. We hope that he's okay, but we're going to see Hamp Sisson for at least one play. Yep. 
not an easy place for a redshirt freshman to come into his first action of the season here in Blacksburg Virginia with a third and long and this crowd getting back into the game I'll tell you what Eric you, that, that's exactly right we were here in 2010 we had our starter get hurt let's just say this crowd went crazy when the backup came in and I recall a handoff <laughs> maybe a couple of them yeah well, this is third and eight Berman three for nine Sisson gonna cut it loose does win the catch but he got hit right away by Connor who's had a big second half five plays and now a punt coming for Clay Hendricks team who finds themselves giving up two scores in a minute 48 here in the third and all of a sudden Hezekiah Grimsley's back to take the punt of Grayson Atkins who handles all of the kick punt options for Furman they got close to blocking the last punt looks like they're in a little more safe mode here they're going to try and hang this one up. Hezekiah, the fair catch. And the Hokies will play from inside their 10. Don't forget, this is just game one of a triple header on ACC Network. Coming up next, we'll send you to South Florida. Manny Diaz in the Canes against Bethune Cookman. Bill Roth, Sean Kajimi, and Dr. Jerry Punch will be there at the Hard Rock. And at 7.30, off to Charlottesville in the grounds at the University of Virginia tonight. Florida State and number 25 Virginia ACC Network primetime football presented by Geico with Dave O'Brien Jim Hasselbeck and Katie George How about the difference between the first half and just the third quarter alone for Virginia Tech Keyshawn Kane back in the ball game and he'll get revved up right side and That's a gain of six on first down for King Who's already got a career high going today and he ran into the safety Ryan Sensing a trend here for Virginia Tech Justin Fuente was not pleased with their ability to run the football in the first half. Yeah. They have made a concerted effort to establish that here in the second. Sure have. Ryan went out after the collision with King. Willis got ripped there, and he'll be pulled to the ground, and it's Gilby, the linebacker. Nobody fooled here wearing a white hat. No, Gilby comes on a blitz from the backside. Oh, he almost knocked it out, Roddy. He almost did. It's a good job by Ryan Willis in taking care of the football. Looked like that was a zone read, and, and by the read guy, the guy that you're supposed to read, it was a good play of pulling the ball, but that guy on the backside is supposed to be accounted for by the blocker. So Dalton King, a tight end in the slot with the three at the bottom of the screen. Single receiver to the top. Willis, middle of the field. And the catch made by Tavion Robinson for a first down right at the number. Boy, what a good spot up by the young freshman Robinson here. The middle of the field was wide open, and that's sometimes what you get when you have these zone coverages. There was no one within five yards. It's an easy pitching catch over the middle for an experienced quarterback in Ryan Willis. They brought a zone pressure there, and... The linebacker did not drop into the middle zone. Jordan Willis was staring right at Ryan Willis, but he did not drop back into coverage. Odd to see. Here's Kane again. And he will gain nothing on the play. The play never really developed for Keyshawn Kane. Just 23 yards last week and a touchdown. He had the first score of the ball game for the Hokies. One day's team. You know, kind of let things get interesting in the fourth when they didn't necessarily want to. And today they were interesting, <laughs> too interesting for everybody's liking in the first half, although they've taken the lead here in the third. Play fake, pressure coming, flip to King with blockers. Look out, here's Keyshawn King, a first down to the 34. And I want to tell you now, Elijah McCoy may have a little laundry to pick up. <laughs> well, it's good play design. You get a couple of play fakes and then a screen set up. And honestly, I'm not sure that the center, Brian Hudson, didn't tackle Keyshawn King right there. It's hard on those big guys when you get down the field. You're chasing all these little guys around, and then you end up hitting your own man. That's why they tell us. Yeah, exactly. That's why they tell us to get out of the space and cut block, because otherwise you're just going to get in the way, get a holding penalty, or prevent an even bigger play there. Get out of the way, son. You saw King come out, but police back in, and 
Just a couple for Deshaun McLeese on first down as we work our way toward two minutes to go now. And Eric, they're back to looking at Keyshawn King on that Virginia Tech bench. Yeah, this could be a big story for them because McLeese is not nearly as effective as King is in the backfield. We heard that from Fuente and everybody within the program. King is the future at running back. 119 on a dozen carries, and Robinson got lit up by a near trap that time. So now third and all of it for Virginia Tech at Amir, 34. Amir Trapp with a great play there. His dad, James Trapp, was voted the dirtiest player in the NFL for a number of years. Amir does not have that reputation. That was a great hard hit, though. <laughs> That's a stat for you. Yeah, it is. He would with some deep research. Here's Willis. Flips it on the cross, and Caleb Smith going to be taken down right at the line. Sometimes we saw the crossing route work effectively in the first half. Furman's had a beat on the last two times they've tried it, though. Well, that time, Amir Trapp, who we just called his name for the tackle on the screen pass, is locked on to Caleb Smith coming across the field. That's the only read that Ryan Willis has. It's a good stand by this Furman defense. Hokies burned four minutes on the eight plays. Good punt here by Bradburn, and Trap going to let it hit. It's a foot race, and they can't get to it. Reggie Floyd almost was able to keep it alive. It's a 66-yard punt by Bradburn, which is three shy of his longest of the year and six shy of his career best. Don't forget the huddle comes your way on Friday nights. Our great group, Jack Collinsworth, Keeps everybody in line. Eric McLean, E.J. Manuel, Coach Rick. They'll get the weekend slate updated for you. And ready to roll. 8 o'clock Friday night, Saturday mornings at 11 on ACC Network. And, of course, the ESPN app. We had the app humming last night. Yeah, we did. Watching Boston College in Kansas while also dialing up Carolina Wake Forest in Winston-Salem. Here's Wynn shaking off one tackler and riding the play out to the 27. A gain of right at seven for Devin Wynn. Well, well, speaking of the huddle, Wes, I know our boys, E.J. Manuel and Eric McLean, have a little bit of a fashion back and forth going on, but my boy, E. Wood, on the sideline, and they brought it. Yeah, we might need to get a camera on Eric Wood's uh, suit coat liner today. We should have done it with Bruce here. He would have got a kick out of it. Yeah, yeah well, why not? Show it off. I mean, Eric has got a major sport coat lining today. A little, little homage to his Buffalo Bills Absolutely. days. <laughs> and straight ahead, there goes Abrams. Boy, Devin Abrams plays a lot bigger than 218 pounds, Roddy. First down run there. All of these backs do. And, and of course, I got to give a shout out to my guy, David Sims, the running back yep. coach of Furman. Played at Georgia Tech. He has been an excellent addition to this coaching staff, has really gotten his guys right. They're running hard today. Third quarter in the books, Virginia Tech in a one minute, 48 second span. Got two touchdowns. Hokies by three when we go to the fourth in Blacksburg after this on eighth. In the last segment, this jacket was a little Thursday night special when I was up in Buffalo. <laughs> what, what are we, what are we? Shade. Oh, oh look no, at that. oh yeah, Ralph look Wilson. Look at the stadium, stadium. Oh, huh? Man. And Come it's monogram, look, Come got on. it. Personalized. Can't, can't hide it, Wes. Can't hide that Pro Bowl hey, money. Can't hide, can't hide Pro Bowl I, money. I used to have some style when I was playing. Now, big guys can have style, too, you know. You cannot hide Pro Bowl money, Friday. Can't hide it. Granger all the way through on the boot to the 38. Second down coming up. Oh, my man, he would with the shades on on the sideline, Pull him on the ground. Come on now. Hey, by the way, that'll get some run on the uh, late night all ACC show tonight. <laughs> I'm sensing that that one may already be pulled, Eric. It better. I'm down here playing your guy's show, Pony. <laughs> Y'all coaching me up in the breaks. Oh, yeah. We had Coach Brick in the Spork in week one. Come on. Second down, that's Gordon in orbit. Uh oh. Trouble. Kendricks. This Virginia Tech defense has been all substance in the second half. This is a triple option play. It just gets blown up right away. You saw in the backfield a number of defenders. I don't even 
know how Darren Granger thought he was going to get out of there. It's ultimately number 93, Mario Kendrick, that finishes him off. But Eli Adams was back there. Oh. There was a number of guys. The Hokies setting up a third and long. Kendrick's in there for Hewitt. I'm looking for Furman to move the pocket here. They have not done well when they've dropped straight back. And third, three of ten on third down, and incomplete. The flag gets thrown from in front of the Furman bench on Divine Diablo. There's three flags. The umpire, Hilbert Byer, signaled Pass incomplete. Defense, number 17. Automatic first down in the spot of the foul. Bang, bang in the middle of the field. Divine Diablo, who's one of the most intimidating safeties in the entire conference, just a little bit early with it happening in the middle of the field. And when you when you hit a guy from behind like that before the ball gets there, really obvious good call by the referees. But uh, that close-up that we got of Divine Diablo is giving me flashbacks to Cam Chancellor in that jersey. <laughs> oh, man. I was thinking the same thing, Roddy. I once won against Cam Chancellor in the league at 6'3", 223, playing safety. Number 17, Diablo is a specimen. Yep. Here is Wynn, banging away for about three on first down. We're early here in the fourth. Virginia Tech has regained the lead with two third-quarter touchdowns. Both scores coming in a span of a minute and 48 seconds. What a huge penalty by Diablo, though. They had Furman third and super long and let him off the hook there. That is an enormous penalty. It certainly is. I'm not sure that Thomas Gordon would have been able to make the catch if he didn't commit it, but you're right, Eric. Big time penalty. Second down. Uh oh. That was Belmar. And here's the thing, guys. I mean, watch, once the crack in the wall forms, the Hokies are there. Well, that time you get a defensive lineman one-on-one -on -one with Devin Wynn, the running back, has had such a good day running the football, but it's Eli Adams making the play, getting around him, and then Emmanuel Belmar comes in and finishes him up. It's a tough situation for Darren Granger to be in. I don't like Furman going to this play action. Yes. If you're going to drop back, look, get some quick passes so you're able to get your guys in space because now Virginia Tech has gotten aggressive bringing blitzes. They're not as afraid to go man-to-man -man against this receiving core. Early start for Gordon. That'll cost him five. First penalty of the day against Clay Hendricks' team. Ball Comes start. with 12.04 to go Offense. in the game. Number 71. Five-yard penalty. Third down. They ticket Jordan Harris, but from up top, it looked like Thomas Gordon got the running start. There were a couple of guys who succumbed to this noise at Lane Stadium now that this crowd is back into it on third downs. And with third in a country mile, I would, would not be surprised to see a run, a quarterback drive, some sort of screen here, a safe play for Furman. Okie Faithful had the keys out. Abrams gets three. And here comes the punting for the Paladins. Got some ball left in this one. When you get the opportunity, when you get in a situation where it's third and long, you have not been good at preventing Virginia Tech from getting in your backfield. You don't have enough time for those long routes to develop. Just go with the run. And it feels like all the momentum is on the side of Virginia Tech. Punted away from Grimsley again. Hezekiah back to the 12. Grimsley tries to make one miss, and he'll scrap back for a yard to the 13. Nice punt by Grayson Atkins. Top that honors great teachers across the country. And this week, Ryan Willis told us about John Holmes, the head football coach, Bishop Mage, in Overland Park, Kansas, who he considered not only a great influence of his, not only a teacher of the sport, but a teacher of life. So he's like a second father to him. And it's our pleasure to honor John Holmes to learn more about Extra Yards for Teachers. Follow at CFP Extra Yard or search the hashtag Extra Yard Week. And Willis to Turner. Covers about half of it. Second and five coming up for Virginia Tech with a three-point lead and under 11 minutes to go. 
Well, really, since that interception, Wes, and especially in the second half, we really have not seen Ryan Willis be put in a situation where he has to throw the ball down the field. It's mainly been these short passes, those sort of screens, and then the one fade to Trey Turner for the touchdown, but it's largely been the run game here in the second half. Willis has been pretty clean, by the way, in the second half. He's seven for seven. I think all of those, except for the Trey Turner fade, were behind the line of scrimmage. And Deshaun McLeese gets three. It'll be third and about a yard and a half. Jonah Tibbs from Spain Park in Birmingham, the tackle for Furman. Paladins are headed home. Bobby Land will have the Mercer Bears to Paladin Stadium next Saturday in Greenville. And Virginia Tech, as we told you at the front, will have a, about a week off, kind of a 13-day break before Duke is here next uh, week from Friday. Get a shot at Keyshawn King there on the sideline, limping around. Here's Willis around the edge, first down. Diving toward the 30, running behind Deshaun McLeese. When you're a running back and you're splitting time, one way to get more opportunities to run the football, throw a good block for your quarterback out front. Those blocks are never fun because it's physical against physical. But the willingness to be able to do it from McLeese is what gets Virginia Tech the first down. So Deshaun McLeese helps his quarterback, and now a little bit of a pistol set here for Virginia Tech. Pressure coming, Willis in trouble, and another sack. That time, they were able to get back there with Shavka. And the fourth sack by Furman. Well, Wes, this is a seven-man protection. It's only a two-man route down the field. And Virginia Tech just not able to keep Shavka out of the backfield. That was a long-developing play that you keep all those guys in to give your quarterback time. And a miscommunication up the middle allows Furman to get the sack. 61 Brian Hudson I believe was the guy who was supposed to be sliding to that gap looking at the protection and just did not get there in time Here's Willis now after the loss of seven the throw the catch by Keene the tight end And Dalton Keene gets a good bit of it back, but it's still going to be third and about six or so Great Gilby the linebacker who has played well today Makes the stop that's a good job of patience, though, by Ryan Willis. You, you take what the defense gives you, go into your tight end underneath. He's able to get a little bit after the catch as well. It cuts it more than cuts it in half. They go from a second and long to a third and manageable here with six yards to go. Virginia Tech, you see the third downs this half, 7 of 12 in the ball game. That's Patterson in motion. Willis wants to throw, puts it up, and offline for Phil Patterson. Adrian Hope. We talked about the FCS All-America preseason pick at the top. He had a sack early in the game, and that time forced maybe potentially the errant throw by Willis. Well, that is going to frustrate Ryan Willis to no end because he's got Phil Patterson towards the sideline and just absolutely air mails it because of the pressure. Six plays, and here's the punt toward Trap. We'll make the fair catch at the 15. 7.41 to go in Blacksburg. Hokies by three when we come back. But the day turned for Virginia Tech here midway the third. And now all of a sudden it's kind of been the advantage of Bud Foster's defense here, Roddy, the last couple of Furman possessions. Well, honestly, they played pretty well the entire game with the exception of a couple of those drives in the first half that came after Virginia Tech turnovers. And they have been dominant here in the second. Ball at the 15 for Darren Granger. And this is Devin Wynn. And maybe a step toward the 16, not much more. Manuel Belmar, big number eight, gets up off the turf. Well, Furman comes in, the number 13 FCS team in the country after the six-point loss at Georgia State. But the Paladins are 6-29-1 since 1982 against the FBS. Their last win was 2015 when they beat UCF by a point. Granger cuts it loose, looking for Gordon, and intercepted. Caleb Farley. Yeah. 
Second turnover of the day for Farmer. Well, Darren Granger thinks he has Gordon wide open down the middle of the field, but Farley, the corner, falls off, is able to track the ball down just a little bit overthrown. It's going to be Virginia Tech ball looking to extend this lead when we come back. Defense falls off the route, and the only player on either team fast enough to do that is number three. This week, they had him clocked at 24.1 miles per hour on their GPS systems. That's the fastest we've heard all year, to put in perspective, the fastest human on earth, Usain Bolt, 27 miles per hour. McLeese on the carry to start the drive after Furman's second turnover. That's world-class speed. That's almost speeding in a, in a school zone, Wes. 24 and some change. I mean, good Lord. Here is Tavion Robinson turning the corner and down the far side. Furman 37-yard line is where they spot Robinson shoved out of bounds by Ryan here. Virginia Tech going with a little bit of tempo, a couple of runs back to back, getting Robinson out on the perimeter that time. And you can sort of see this Furman defense has spent a lot of time on the field in the second half. This is the depth issue that Clay Hendricks was talking about with the less scholarships and having to go against this Virginia Tech team who is physical, Obviously an FBS program very talented as well Coming up on six minutes to go McLeese the call And he'll flip for Maybe three two for sure Keyshawn King by the way been tended to a couple different times here in this uh, second half fellas and he is back on the Virginia Tech bench area. He does have a sleeve on his right knee, an orange sleeve. But we have yet to see him after the second visit to the sports medicine folks come back on the field. Willis. Going to turn it up the field. And ooh, took a lick from Blackshear, who intercepted Ryan Willis earlier in the game. And, boy, the young man from Overland Park is shaking up. Blackshear. Hey, Willis got the wind knocked out of him. I like the toughness right here by Ryan Willis, but slide. There's no reason to take this hit. That's one of those on Monday or Sunday. Whenever you come back and, and talk about it, watch film, coaches are going to tell him, hey, look, you're the starting quarterback. Live to play another play. We don't need that extra yard that much for you to put yourself in danger. Get down and slide. Hendon Hooker. Is taking some snaps in front of the Virginia Tech bench. Well, Ryan Willis got the wind knocked out of him. And Hendon Hooker, redshirt sophomore at 6'4", 228 from Greensboro, North Carolina, will come in. Eighth career game he played briefly last week in the... Final stands against Old Dominion. Here's Turner on a little jet, and Trey Turner keeps his feet and will score. Roddy, you don't see the jet into the boundary very much. No, you do not, but you do it because there's less numbers over there, and if you get good blocking down the field, you're able to, you got a talented guy here in the football. You're able to get down and score a touchdown. That foot looks like there is green grass in between that and the sideline. Just by a fraction of an inch. Trey Turner able to find his way into the end zone and extend this lead. Yep. Great, great time for the Hokies, too. Ryan Willis was down there celebrating with the team in the end zone. Just appeared to get the wind knocked out of him. That's great news for the Hokies. Five plays, 62 yards. Minute 45, and the lead now 10. A tight end is scored on the ground, and now wide receiver has. All here in half two for Virginia Tech. Well, 24-14, and you see three second-half touchdowns, and the Hokie defense pitching a shutout, Roddy. Well, it's been all Virginia Tech in the second half, and they have been absolutely fantastic on the defensive side of the football. John Parker Romo. Transfer from Tulsa to kick it away for Virginia Tech. And there'll be no return. Furman will scrimmage from its 25. 
Well, look at the second half from Virginia Tech. First, you get James Mitchell, the tight end, rumbling into the end zone on the jet sweep handoff. Then a fumble force from Devin Wynn. Virginia Tech jumps on it. That led to the Trey Turner fade in the end zone, just winning a one-on-one -on -one battle. Then later on, Trey Turner once again doing it on the ground. He has been all over for this Virginia Tech team in the second half. We're going to come back from a deficit at halftime, now up by 10, 24 to 14, establishing their dominance over Furman. What well, a reverse. This is Gordon trying to get to the perimeter. And picks up five right around the 30 goes Thomas Gordon. Jermaine Waller, who brought the lunch pail to work today here at Lane Stadium, shoved him out. Reggie Floyd patrolling. Yeah. Reggie Floyd in that number one jersey, and that's a change this year for Virginia Tech West. Number one had not been worn since Justin Fuente arrived here, but the player said, hey, look, coach, we want number one in play. So he said, hey, all right, you establish some ground rules on what you want your number one player to attribute, to look like in terms of personality on the field, off the field, and they said they wanted to be a leader, team first on and off the field and as voted by his teammates Reggie Floyd best exemplified that and he told us after being 21 the past couple seasons it's weird to see that single digit yeah. on the jersey he has a hard time picking himself out on film but he was a joy to talk to yesterday Granger slow to get up after that last play at only 195 pounds he's taking some shots today Abrams cuts back first down and Hewitt Finally saddles him up for the tackle at the 41. Well, the number one jersey, the the things that go on in the offseason program, Eric, it, it speaks to kind of the philosophical culture shift that's gone on here the last couple of years for Coach Puente. There is, and it's created this huge youth movement within the Virginia Tech program. And we talked earlier, the only program with more transfers last year was University of Louisville. They have lost a number of players a lot of guys that played meaningful minutes for them. Wynn tried to make a one-hand catch of a rope from Granger. Overshot him incomplete. And Wes, Eric mentioned the youth movement. One guy that we haven't mentioned today who's been a big part of leading the youth of this Virginia Tech program is Brock Hoffman. Right. If you remember the Coastal Carolina transfer who kind of was put through the ringer by the NCAA through the transfer process, was declared ineligible the week of the Boston College game. But Coach Fuente told us this guy has been a true leader, not only of the offensive line, but of these young guys in the developmental squad. And that is leadership. Because he's in there on those Friday workouts leading those young guys, it looks like we're going to get an off a false start. Number 71, offense, five-yard penalty, second down. It was an interesting conversation with Coach Fuente about Brock Hoffman. Yeah. Simply from, Eric, I thought the part where he said Hoffman was at peace with whatever the ultimate decision was, he wanted to play, but he prepared himself not to play. Yeah, that shows the maturity of Brock and to work with the developmental guys to let to leave an impact on this program this year by leading those guys and, and showing them the way is huge. And it's something you don't see often in college sports these days. Play on the perimeter. This is Anderson, the freshman who got out in space. Farley shoved him out of bounds. And it is before the first down mark at the Virginia Tech 49. So this is third and a couple here for Furman. And, and, and Eric, you mentioned the leadership shown by, by Brock Hoffman. That's not just something that's going to impact them this year. That's going to that's something that's going to continue to impact them for years to come because those guys follow his lead. So I mean, you can't say enough good things about the way he has handled this, especially with the youth on this team. Abrams, the single back here. And he will split to the left. First down and more. Evan Abrams keeps his feet and he'll be brought down inside the five. Clay Hendricks wants his team on the ball here. Well, it kind of felt like Virginia Tech could put this out of reach, but a little belly play off tackle. A couple of missed tackles and Devin Abrams rumbles down inside the five. They've got to hurry up. This time is running down. We get down near the two minute mark, but if they're able to punch it in here, Wes, we got a game. Yep. First and goal, and Abrams got a step maybe toward the two. It's interesting that a lot of their two minute offense here, this hurry up offense, has been optioned. 
All game, Furman has struggled dropping back the pass and protecting Granger. So they have said, let's get over that. Let's just run the option. Two ten left to go and counting. Win back in the game. He'll get the carry, and the Hokies get the stop. Big play by Rook Ashby. Timeout taken by the Paladins. Rashard Ashby, you ask your big timers to go make plays in times like this. You absolutely do. Watch him knife through the line of scrimmage and tackle. Devin Wynn in the backfield. Who else was there? Reggie Floyd, the guy that we've called his name a number of times in, during this game. Now you've got a third down situation. And if you're Furman, to be completely honest with you, you almost have to throw the ball in this situation because you've got two shots at the end zone. If you're to run it and not get it, you either have to burn another timeout or you can let the clock run down, but is there going to be enough time on the back end to be able to get the ball back if you're not able to recover an onside kick? Well, the other thing, too, the Paladins are 10 for 10 in red zone this year. 10 trips, 10 touchdowns. And Clay Hendricks, I think we're certainly in two down territory here, but I'm going to go back and take some of Eric's advice here. I might put one up. Roberto in the backfield with Garrett, uh, Granger. That's win in motion. Granger to his right. Trouble coming. Incomplete. And this, it looked like Crawford almost got him before he cut it loose. This is an interesting decision here. They're going to opt to go for three instead of going for the touchdown first. You got to get a touchdown a field goal if you're going to tie it. So you go for the three here and then hope for an onside kick, recovery, or a stop. Had they gotten a little bit closer, Wes, I think they may have gone for it, but as it stands, they're going to go ahead and kick the field goal. 22 yards, dead center. And this is Grayson Atkins, who hit a 39-yarder in their opener against Charleston Southern, second try of the year. And it is perfect. So 149 to go, and the Paladins to within a touchdown. Don't forget. Week three of ACC football continues on ACC Network next. We'll be at the Hard Rock in South Florida. Bill Roth, John and Jimmy, Dr. Punch along for Bethune, Cookman, and Miami. And then ACC Network primetime football presented by Geico tonight. Florida State and number 25, Virginia. And let me just tell you how fun it's been this week to see some of the great Florida State-Virginia games of the past on ACC Network, including the Knowles' first loss in 1995 when Warwick Dunn was stopped by Anthony Poindexter at the goal line. Man, the names that you get out of that rivalry, absolutely incredible, a ton of fun. And by the way, the field goal by Atkins sets a Furman record for consecutive field goals, now 13 by the young man from Inman, South Carolina. And the onside kick, most assuredly coming up with 149 to go. Furman, by the way, has two timeouts. Virginia Tech three as we wind down here. Look at the way the ball was sitting on that tee. Atkins tries to spin it along the ground, and it is recovered by the Paladins. Ryan Miller, the tight end. Now you know why he set the ball up the way he did. There was some curve, some bend to this football. Look at where it's going. It takes a left-hand turn to give his team a time to get down there. And Virginia Tech not able to come up with it. That's Hezekiah Grimsley, who has to be able to read the ball to try and figure out when he can go for it and jump on it. And what a play for Furman. We got ourselves a ball game. 147, two timeouts, down by a touchdown. Illegal recovery by the Kenyon team. Previous play is on a further review. So the review of the recovery by Miller. And that'll put Gary Patterson, the referee, on the headset.
So let's see. Does the ball go the necessary 10 yards? Well, it certainly goes 10. Yeah. I think we definitely have a legal recovery here, guys. Right. And I think if you're Hezekiah Grimsley, you have to attack the football there. You have to go towards it. Everyone on the front line, the way they set up the return, everyone on the front line was going up and blocking. They're essentially saying, number six, this is on you. You're our experienced receiver. Make this play. And he's got to go attack the football. But that is a tough play with the curvature that you mentioned, Roddy. The ball went 10 yards. There didn't seem to be anybody offside. Well, Wes, we're told they're looking to see if there was a Furman player that blocked a Virginia Tech player from going to recover the football, which would make it an illegal recovery. Right. There's no doubt that Furman recovered the ball in bounds. The question is, was there a block by Furman preventing Virginia Tech from getting to the football? Well. Fairly consequential play in the game here. Yeah, I would say so. Now, Gary Patterson is talking. And with the uh, replay official and the communicator, Jack McElwee. After further review, it was determined that number five for the kicking team blocked prior to they, where they could legally possess the ball. The five yard penalty will be assessed against Furman, and they will re kick. That penalty is going to be assessed on Dayon Wilkins. Wow. That's the guy they're looking at right there. Let's roll it. He goes up. I don't know about that. I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, well, yeah, he runs into the player. But, he runs into Ashby, but is it? I mean, he's running down the field in his lane. I, they determine that that's going to impede Ashby, but that is, that is a really tough call to make in that situation against Furman when they get the onside kick. I don't I don't agree with that one. I don't agree with it at all. Ashby, their middle linebacker, is not out there to even return the ball. He is out there simply to block. That there, there is no excuse for that. Uh, and it, it it didn't even yeah, you're right, Eric. It didn't even look like Ashby was going for the ball. That's and he may have even initiated the contact. That's that's a brutal call in that situation. So here's Atkins again. And the Hokies. Will fall on it with Grimsley this time. And Clay Hendricks still hot at the Furman bench. And, and he has every right to be. I mean, for that to go to review and then be overturned on review, that, that, that's tough. That's tough. That's yep. a tough pill to swallow for, for a team that's punching above its weight, recovers an onside kick, and what you think is a is a, a good, clean play. It didn't look like there was any intent by his guy to actually block. I would be hot too if I were Clay Hendricks, but his team still has an opportunity. You got to get a stop in this three downs. You're not going to get the ball back with much time, but you've got a fighting chance. Ryan Willis with Deshaun McLeese in the backfield. And McLeese will get a couple of yards. And no timeout yet with 136 to go. Gilby the tackle, and now a Furman player is down. And Wes, they have to use the time out there because right. if not, when a defensive player goes down, it's a 10 second runoff and then the clock is going to start as well. So you use the time out so that no more time runs off the clock. So Jordan Willis, the co-captain who played at Nice High School on the first coast in Florida, is the guy shaking up on the play. Willis came in there, tackle leader, by the way, Roddy, and we haven't called his name very much today. They've done a nice job keeping him at arm's length. So it's good to see Willis up and making a move toward the Furman bench. Don't forget Top Tony Women's Soccer on ACC Network tomorrow. Number seven, South Carolina. Comes to Clemson. The number 20, Tigers wait. Six o'clock Eastern is the kick on the pitch on ACC Network. So Clay Hendricks still kind of fuming a little bit on the onside kick ruling. And his team down a score now. They're down to one timeout and 95 seconds left. And you can be most assured that Virginia Tech's going to run the ball here with second and eight because the Hokies can run the ball 
twice and get it inside. Hendricks would use the timeout after third down. And that would give the ball basically in the neighborhood of about 45 to 50 45 seconds. seconds. Yeah. yeah, somewhere in that neighborhood. Which is, a, you, you're, you're got a fighting chance. Yeah, you're going mean, to have, you're going to be out of timeouts. But to Eric's point, you haven't thrown the ball very well at all here in the second half. And here's Turner on the sweep. Trey Turner steps through. And he will pick up the first down. And guess what? It doesn't matter now. Nice play call by Coach Fuente and offensive coordinator Brad Cornelson. Cornelson. They've gotten a lot of run out of that jet sweep. We saw James Mitchell on it. We saw Trey Turner on it. I think if you're Virginia Tech, you're happy to get out of here with a win. You can't say enough about this Furman team, the fight that they showed today. Just the ability to come out into a tough environment and stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the perennial power in the ACC. In Virginia Tech, the good thing is, second half, you ran the ball. Yeah. You ran the ball very well. But they've got a lot to fix. And, and Coach Fuente told us, hey, we're a work in progress, as all these teams are this time of year. Furman's going to tell you Tell you this, if the here's the timeout by Furman. I, I'll say this about Justin Fuente, his team here. The the running of the freshman Keyshawn King. Eric, I know we had this conversation a little bit last week as it related to quarterback play at Georgia Tech. And and what Tobias Oliver was able to do as compared to James Graham and Lucas Johnson. Keyshawn King needs to be running the rock here for the Hokies, Roddy. Definitely, and, and he is going to be the man in this program at running back, and that came on full display today. And you saw as he went out of the game with injury, besides um, besides him, they really only gave the ball running it to Trey Turner. Those were the only effective ones. They, it wasn't McLeese. It was Willis down in the red zone. It was Willis on the big third down, right. and then Trey Turner on the jet sweeps. So that and the... Development of the offensive front, Roddy, two things that have got to be at the top of the punch list, right? It, it, it's going to be huge. Uh, they expect at some point Zachariah Hoyt and TJ Jackson, the starting center and right guard, to be back, which will give them great depth. But until those guys come back, there is going to have to be some development amongst this young offensive line. Now, they get a bye week next week before ACC play starts and Duke comes to town, a very talented Duke team that's going to, to test what this Virginia Tech team is able to do. Well, and they're going to get the win here today. One more touch of the knee by Willis. And the Hokies will go to 2-1. and one. But make no mistake, the Paladins of Furman came in here today and threw a couple of haymakers and had a lead at the break. And then in the second half, the Hokies had to scramble, make a couple of touchdowns in less than two minutes of the third quarter, and then hold on at the end. 24-14 to 14 is the final. Virginia Tech goes to two and one, and as Roddy said on the 27th, they'll welcome Duke here on a Friday night. Meanwhile, Clay Hendricks and the Paladins at one and two, and kind of a hard luck one and two, to be honest.